In this video, we introduce the nomenclature for coordination compounds and then analyze a couple of examples to see how the rules play. All right, so the first thing that you need to do to name a coordination compound is figure out uh, what are the counter ions and what is the complex ion. Right, in this case, uh, those are the counter ions, this is the counter ion, the complex ion, and here you have your complex ion, and that is the counter ion. Now, these are all ionic compounds, and you're going to name them exactly the same way as you would an ionic compound. First, the cation, then the anion. So in this case, the name of this uh, coordination compound would be the name of this complex ion, which is the cation, followed by chloride. Now, in this case, uh, you would name the anion first, the, the cation first, which is ammonium, and then the name of the anion. All right, so uh, then uh, the counter ion, the nomenclature of the counter ion is straightforward, is much as what we have studied in uh, regular ionic compounds. So let's concentrate now on the nomenclature of that complex ion. All right, so in the complex ion, you're go going to have a transition metal and then ligands. You first name the ligands and then the transition metal. Okay, when naming the ligands, uh, uh, if you have more than one type of ligand, as we have right here, ammonia and chlorine, and then uh, chlorine and uh, water, then you're going to name those uh, ligands alphabetically. Okay, so um, uh, in this case, uh, this will be uh, the ligand amine, starts with the letter A, and that is chloro. So uh, you will first uh, name the amine and then the chloro. In this case, uh, this ligand is going to be called aqua, and this is going to be chloro. So you will first name aqua and then chloro. All right, great. Uh, notice that many of these ligands can actually have uh, uh, the stoichiometry may be more than one. Here you have five amine ligands, and here you have two aqua ligands, four chloro ligands, right? So to specify that, you need to specify, you need to uh, use uh, prefixes that are going to be uh, mono di, tri, and so forth, tetra, right? Uh, and the exception to this is that sometimes you can have quite complex uh, uh, ligands or ligands that already have some of these prefixes in them. For example, this ligand, EN, is called ethylene diamine, right? So the di prefix is already inside this ligand and that means that uh, you cannot use uh, uh, any of these ligands, uh, if you, any of these prefixes, if you already have one of them inside that uh, ligand. Right, so in that case, we use a different set of prefixes, which are bis, tris, tetrakis, and so forth. All right, and again, we're gonna see a few examples uh, in, which, in which we'll have to use those type of prefixes. All right, so uh, again, we've said that we're trying to name, uh, name here the uh, complex ion. We've said that you first name the ligands, then the transition metal. The ligands have to be alphabetical, and then um, uh, you have to specify prefixes to indicate the stoichiometry uh, of those ligands. Right, after you have uh, named the ligands, then you have to name uh, the transition metal. Right, and uh, for naming the transition metal, you always have to specify the charge between parentheses with Roman numerals. Okay, so in this particular case, notice that uh, the charge of this complex is plus two, right? That means that because you have uh, uh, a negative charge there in this uh, chloral ligand, then that is going to be uh, plus three, right? So the name of the transition metal will be cobalt parentheses uh, Roman numerals three. Okay, in this particular case, notice that uh, that is a plus one ion that means that uh, this complex ion has to be uh, negative one, okay? And then uh, that means that because uh, these aqua ligands are neutral, and then uh, the uh, chloro ligands are minus one, then the, the charge in the uh, chromium atom has to be plus three, right? So then uh, you, you would specify the charge of that metal atom with uh, Roman numerals between parentheses. All right, now when naming the metal, uh, it actually matters whether the complex ion is positive or negative. If it's positive, like what we have right here, notice that this complex ion is positive, right? You simply use the name of the metal and then follow with the uh, charts in Roman numerals between parentheses. Okay. If uh, this complex ion is anion, 
what you actually have to do is add the eight suffix at the end of the name of the metal, right? So that will be chrome mate, right? Uh, uh, if you have cobalt, but it will be a negative uh, ion, it will be cobaltate, uh, and so forth. Now, there are some uh, transition metals that have odd names uh, that you need to re remember. For example, iron, when it's the transition metal in an anionic complex ion, would be called ferrate. Uh, and when you have lead, it would be plumate. And when you have tin, it will be stannate. And there's about a handful of those uh, that use all nomenclature that are, uh, are needed to know. All right, so uh, after this, we're uh, almost ready to then uh, name uh, these examples that we have right here because we have all of the rules. Uh, we just have to uh, make sure that we have the names of the ligands correctly, okay? Because some ligands can actually have uh, odd names as well. If the ligands are neutral, then generally they would use the same name as the molecule. Okay? And if they're uh, negatively charged, then they're going to have the root of the name followed by O. Okay, so for example here, this, uh, it would be a chlorine uh, or a chloride if you want to, but the name that it's going to receive is chloro. The same with, the thing will happen with any of the halogens, right, where you would have that those are going to be called fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo, and then uh, this one will be called cyano, then this one is going to be called hydroxo. Again, notice that all of those have negatively, uh, have a minus one negative charge, and that's why they all finish in that with that suffix O. And then for the neutrals, again, we're saying that um, uh, usually you use the name of the molecule, uh, but there are some exceptions that we also have to consider. Okay, so NH3, uh, that will be ammonia, but the ligand is called amine. Uh, this, the name of the molecule is water, but the ligand is called aqua. Uh, this molecule we call carbon monoxide, but the name of the ligand will be carbonyl. And another common uh, ligand will be uh, that ligand, will be, which will be nitrogen monoxide, uh, but the name of the ligand is nitrocell. All right, so I think that we now have all of the rules and some of the exceptions uh, to try to name uh, all of these, uh, these two compounds that we have right here. All right, so let's see uh, how that would work. Again, first the, anion, the cation and then the anion. So I'm already going to write here that this is going to be chloride. That is the name of the uh, anion. So now comes the name of the cation. In first, the ligands in alphabetical order with prefixes. All right, so that is going to be amine, and that is chloro. So that will be pentamin chloro. Penta amine chloro, and there's no space in between uh, these letters, and then you will have the name of the transition metal followed by the charge of that metal in the oxidation number in uh, Roman numerals, so that will be cobalt 3 and then chloride. So the name of the co uh, coordination compound is pentamine chloro cobalt 3 chloride. All right, let's uh, take a look then at this one right here. All right, so uh, this one we first name uh, the cation, so that will be ammonium. And then uh, to name the uh, complex ion, which in this case is anion, you first name the ligands alphabetically and with prefixes, so that will be aqua chloro, that, was, that one goes first with uh, uh, the prefix for the stoichiometry that will be diaqua and then tetrachloro and then you would have the name of the transition metal finished in eight and then the oxidation number uh, between parentheses and Roman numerals right so that is going to be uh, chromate And the oxidation number is three. All right. So the total name of the total name of this uh, coordination compound is going to be ammonium diaqua tetrachloro chromate three. 
Right, so in this video we have seen a couple of examples for naming uh, coordination compounds and uh, we have provided useful rules um, uh, to be able to name all coordination compounds that you will be encountering. I think the difficult aspect of this is that uh, there are some specific names uh, that need to be memorized and those are the ones of common ligands like the ones that we have right here and also the ones uh, for uh, transition metals when you have uh, that the complex ion is um, negatively charged. 